Hello, Theo Traders. This is Gianni DePoche, and today is the 4th of June, 2024. And I want to review some really important charts with you this week. We're seeing some mixed price action, I would say. When it comes to stocks, I'm still encouraged by what we're seeing underneath the surface, as well as the outperformance by some key uh, risk on asset classes. But when we kind of broaden our perspective and our scope and look at what's going on in crude oil and bonds, especially, I am a little less um, optimistic going forward into the summer for stocks. That said, I still think new all-time highs can be registered in the coming weeks. So let's start off by looking at a chart of the S&P futures. We continue to consolidate near the highs, and I would argue that we've uh, formed what appears to be an ascending triangle formation over the last couple of months, and these are continuation patterns, and stocks remain in a bull trend. So if we can start to close above this upper horizontal trend line acting as resistance or really even just close at a new high, I would look for another leg higher in stocks. And it could be almost like a blow off top. I think that there could be one final leg higher in this equity market before things start to turn nasty. Keep in, uh, keep in mind, keep in mind, that we are close to a contract rollover. The September contract for futures will begin uh, next week. We'll start trading that one. But overall, uh, it's important to understand that consolidations near the highs of a move are generally bullish. Now, we've seen tech generally outperform over the last few sessions. If you take a look at the NASDAQ 100 futures here, you'll see that it also is consolidating near its highs. This is bullish. And you know, you've seen semiconductors hold up pretty well. Obviously, NVIDIA doing much of the heavy lifting. We're getting really close to our upside target of 1200 uh, for our swing trade that we took on that triggered a day before earnings. So I'm hoping for selfish reasons that this gets achieved. That is the, the upside price target at 1200 is achieved before the stock split, which is set to occur. I believe it's on Monday. Uh, yes, it's going to be on June 10th, Monday, June 10th. And we'll basically just you know, divide the share price by 10 and you have your, your new uh, criteria. But overall, it looks pretty constructive on the tech side. I think we're going to continue to see Apple emerge as a new leader in the space. Uh, but I'm still encouraged by what's happening in Microsoft. That looks pretty good as we continue to consolidate within this rectangle formation. And even when it comes to Amazon, I think Amazon's trying to complete a higher low here. And it looks pretty good as it consolidates near its high. So overall, the big uh, market moving tech stocks still look pretty healthy. Now, I want to jump over uh, and take a look at what's going on in bonds because you're seeing a big squeeze and a big move higher. And this is lowering rates, right? So when bonds rally, rates come down and you're seeing duration lead to the upside. Now, this is coupled with a pretty uh, sharp decline in uh, energy and crude oil. Now, we are still seeing some decent price action in some niche plays in the energy space, mainly one related to natural gas, CNX uh, resources. This one's holding up. But a lot of the energy names that we've been watching over the last couple of weeks have started to suffer immensely. So we've we've actually trimmed our allocation to them pretty significantly. But if we're in a situation where crude oil prices are coming down and bonds are rising, that tells me a few things. It tells me, one, that demand from the consumer is is weakening. And that's being reflected in lower energy prices. Energy, crude oil is not just what you put into your, you know, your vehicle for when you pump gas. It's used in, in all sorts of, you know, uh, areas of the economy. So if economic demand is dropping, we're seeing that reflected in the energy market. And if energy prices are coming down, that's going to lower inflation expectations, which is going to push bond prices higher. Now, this does increase the likelihood of a rate cut happening this year, but it comes at the cost of economic slowdown. And so that's why I'm, I'm so cautious when it comes to stocks looking ahead into the third quarter, even fourth quarter this year. I think it could be a very different environment than what we're seeing now. And in the meantime, we can continue to play on the long side uh, for stocks, but just with the understanding that the party will come to an end at some point. And so that being said, what we've seen in utilities, and I've commented on this over the last couple of weeks, may have actually been sniffing out some of the strength that we've seen now in bonds. And you may even start to see some opportunities in real estate related sectors. T check out Vanguard Real Estate uh, ETF, uh, big REIT fund. You can even take a look at XLRE. 
starting to see nice bids here. Now, this isn't exactly the strongest signal that we're seeing, right? In fact, real estate and consumer discretionary are the two worst performing sectors year to date in the S&P 500. But here's one thing to keep in mind is if rates continue to come down, it's actually going to turn into a tailwind for these sectors. Why? Because, you know, you have banks with huge paper losses and that's, you know, all in the headlines. You even had a big uh, stock market pullback in, in the country of India this, uh, this past day. But if rates start to come down, that's going to give consumers a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to credit balances and, and things of the sort. It's not going to solve the problem. I do think that signs are showing that the consumer is all is all but tapped out in the U.S. And that's probably why markets are starting to adjust accordingly. And it's been a tale of two tapes in the retail sector. You can look at stocks like we've owned, such as Boot Barn Holdings, continue to make new highs. You can even look at uh, Gap Inc. has been very strong. It's coming down today, but overall it's been a uh, really strong performer. And Abercrombie & Fitch, even Costco has done very well and continues to do so. But then there's other names like Nike that has not done so well. And other um, names like Lululemon, which continue to suffer. So there seems to be a, a great bifurcation or, or divergence taking place in the retail sector. And that has some to do with, I think, with a weakening consumer, but also to do with, with shifting trends, right? You know, to go back to Abercrombie and Fitch, when I was, you know, growing up, it was a popular brand. Then nobody wanted to touch the, you know, the, the apparel. And now it seems to be making a comeback, even though I still don't really see anyone wearing it. But that's beside the point. Apparently, it's doing well as a company. But the reason I bring that up with respect to retail is that we know it follows trends, it follows cycles, separate from what, you know, we're talking about when it comes to price action. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. But if you do see real estate and consumer discretionary make a recovery, those are the only real laggards uh, in the S&P 500 year to date. And I think it would probably be a tailwind for stocks in the near term. Now let's talk about some real risk on science here. And it has to do with crypto. I've been a crypto bull now for a while. And you take a look at the June contract here in Bitcoin futures, trying to close at a new high today. We're not out of the uh, woods just yet, but it is looking encouraging. Ethereum also looking good, but this has tremendous ramifications for some of these crypto uh related stocks such as Marathon Digital Holdings, um, a micro strategy, and Coinbase, which all still look very strong. And I'm encouraged by the price action that we are seeing in this space. And I think that they will continue to outperform the rest of the market, especially if Bitcoin breaks out to a new all-time high, which I think it could do sooner rather than later. Of course, there's also Robinhood, uh, which has done Fairly well. It has a bit of overlap uh, to traditional finance, which is something that I appreciate uh, quite a bit because you know it has traditional uh, brokerage uh, stock trading activity, but also crypto. So it's kind of a hybrid type play. But you know, just to look at financials, despite all the the news of um, you know issues in in the banking space, financials are still holding up our, uh, all right. Goldman Sachs and Wells Fargo. Um, you know, two of our favorite names, of course, you have to include JP Morgan. Wells Fargo is uh, close to breaking a key support zone, but uh, all in all, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs still are the strongest. But I think that the great merge at some point is going to happen between blockchain and traditional finance. I mean, after all, guys, we did just see uh, equity markets move to one day settlement. And at some point, I think there's a good chance that we see instantaneous settlement through the blockchain. And you better believe that crypto is going to play a big part of that. Um, whether or not it's actually Bitcoin and Ethereum does not matter. I don't care. And when I when I speculate on Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's purely from technical and cyclical factors. I understand that you know these may not even be viable securities at some point. Are they even securities? Are they commodity contracts? Are they cryptocurrencies? The government hasn't even figured that out yet. But in the meantime, we will continue to look for opportunities uh, in this market. I do finally want to comment on the weakness uh, of the dollar, you're seeing a big sell-off in the dollar against the Japanese yen. It's really more of a story of Japanese yen strength. You're seeing it uh, kind of do well across all the major currencies today. But even if you look at the dollar against the euro, a little bit of a rebound, but the euro still showing some resiliency. And to me, as long as the dollar is not rising rapidly, that provides a tailwind for stocks to continue higher, coupled with Falling rates, that's a really nice environment for technology, which remember is the biggest sector in the S&P 500. So don't sleep on tech, don't sleep on crypto. I think it's going to push this market higher and be 
aware for a broader rebound in consumer discretionary and potentially even real estate. Okay. And again, those are kind of the concerns that many had in this economy. And if those start to come back, then what else are you going to complain about? And then, of course, that might be the time to actually be concerned from a cyclical standpoint. Obviously, geopolitical and election risks remain elevated in the U.S. in the coming weeks and months. So that takes care of everything that I wanted to review with you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you back in the Theotrade chat room.